Hey everyone, my name is Luke and I'm the player support lead for New World Interactive. Today I'll be showing you how to set up a dedicated Windows server for Insurgency Sandstorm. First things first, you're going to need to download Microsoft's 2015 and 2017 redistributable update files as a prerequisite. After that, you can head over to Valve's developer site to download Steam CMD. This is the client that will allow you to update and launch your Sandstorm server. After you've installed both redistributable update files and have downloaded Steam CMD, you're going to want to create a new folder where you can unzip all of the needed Steam CMD server files. Once you've extracted the Steam CMD zip file to your new folder, you're ready to open it. It's important to note that depending on your connection, the initial install can take a while. When it's completed, type the command line login anonymous and then hit enter. This will log you into Steam's public servers. After that, type app underscore update 581330 validate and then hit enter. This will install and validate your Insurgency Sandstorm dedicated server. Once everything's fully installed, type quit and then hit enter. Now that your new folder is fully populated, you'll want to head over to the Steam Apps folder, then Common, and finally Sandstorm underscore server. This subfolder contains most of the files that we'll need to edit and create. In order to launch our server, we'll need to create a Windows batch file. To do this, create a text document and name it start.bat. Once this file is created, go ahead and open it. Once we have our text editor open, we'll need to add the necessary parameters in order to get our server operating correctly. First, we need to reference the insurgency server executable file. And in this example, the server will be started on refinery push security, hosted on port 27102 and query port 27131 with a maximum of 28 players. I'll be naming this server new world support and I'll set the optional and secure password to password123. It's important to note that when you're setting up the travel parameters for some maps, you'll need to use the alternate map title for it to launch correctly. If there's a typo in the map or scenario name, the server will default to farmhouse. If this happens, verify that you spelled everything correctly in the command line. To find the configuration you're looking for, head over to the server admin guide on our support site, linked in the description. Now that we have a basic server configuration, we need to open our ports. This step is a little more abstract because port forward setups vary depending on your router. We suggest using portforward.com, which offers tutorials for most router manufacturers. The first step that applies to everyone is to log into your router via the default gateway address. Once you enter in this address into your browser, log in using your own credentials or the ones provided to you by your service provider. Locate the port forward settings and open up your ports relative to what you entered in the bat file. Now that we have opened our ports, we need to make sure that our firewall allows the connection to be made for our server to show up in the server browser. In order to do this, press Windows plus R. This will open the run window. Once the window is open, you want to enter the following string, wf.msc, and then hit enter. Next, you want to click the inbound rules in the left panel, and then click new rule on the right panel. Select port and hit next. Now you're going to want to select TCP and make sure you have specific local ports selected. Then you put your ports you have forwarded into the box separated by a comma. For us, this is 27102 for a game port and 27131 for a query port. Select allow connection and hit next. Make sure that all the boxes are checked and then hit next. Finally, name the rule insurgency sandstorm and hit finish. Follow these exact steps one more time with the exception that this time around select UDP for the rule instead of TCP. Now that we've added our inbound rules to the firewall, we can actually launch our server with the batch script file that we created earlier. This is a super basic default configuration that will cycle through all versus PvP scenarios available and it'll just follow the official game rules. This server setup is great if you're just looking for a basic vanilla server to play with some friends. But if you're looking to create a more custom and personalized server, we need to add some more advanced configuration files and commands. Most server configuration is performed through .ini files and launch parameters. To enable custom configuration, first go to the Insurgency folder, Saved, and then Config. Here is where we'll want to go ahead and create a new folder named Windows Server. In this folder, we'll create a text file and name it game.ini. While we're already here, we can go ahead and create a text file that we'll name engine.ini. We won't go much into the engine.ini file, but you'll need it if you ever want to customize performance or add mods to your server. 
Once you've opened the game.ini file with your text editor, you can now enter the appropriate command lines to alter general configuration and game mode configuration. This is also where you would add any mutators that you would like enabled. For general configuration, here's an example of a server that shows kill distance, disables friendly fire, and enables kill feed. For game mode configurations, you have different options for what can be changed relative to the game mode defined in the batch file. Here are some examples for what we can alter for our push server. And as I just mentioned, you can also add different mutators to your server to add challenge or even just ridiculousness to a game mode. At the moment, all of the game.ini configurations are listed within the server admin guide on our support site, linked in the description. The last thing we'll go over in this tutorial is how to set up your server's map cycle. As I mentioned earlier, by default, a server will cycle through all versus PvP scenarios available. To change this, we need to head over to the Insurgency folder, create a folder named config, and then in that folder create a text file that we can name mapcycle.txt. This is where we'll input different scenarios separated by new lines. Relative to our own server that we've just made, here's what a push-only server would look like. Once you've saved the file, head over to edit your batch file to reference your custom map cycle, and you're all set. And there you have it! You can now proudly host your own community server on Insurgency Sandstorm. We hope this tutorial helped you out. To follow along with the video and for more information on advanced configuration like enabling remote access, setting up stats-enabled servers, and more, head over to our server admin guide on our support site, linked in the description. For any further questions or concerns, you can contact the player support team directly by submitting a ticket. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for playing Insurgency Sandstorm.